Hey guys, uh, just a quick opening before the video. I want to say thank you guys all so much for all of your attention on the Stardew Valley guides and kind of jokey videos I've been making recently. You might see that my channel's not really been making that many videos before. I mostly just had the channel as, you know, a channel for YouTube for a while, but I've always really loved games and I really love Stardew Value and it's been such a treat being able to actually make content for these games and, you know, have people enjoy that content, hopefully. I don't want to be too presumptuous. <laughs> but all this to say, thank you guys so much for all the positive reception on the videos I've made so far. If you want to stick around and you've enjoyed the stuff I've made before, please subscribe to the channel and, you know, Leave me comments if you guys have anything you'd like to see me cover and start to value for the future. I've really loved just making the videos I have for the past couple weeks for this game. And hey, my well of creativity hopefully hasn't dried out yet. So <laughs> let me know if you're interested in seeing me tackle anything weird or goofy in this game. All right, now on to the video. Hello everyone, this is Kilroy Was here, back here again to t give you a guide to Stardew Valley's brand new crops for the 1.6 update. Now, in the 1.6 update, there are four brand new crops added to the game. Those crops are the carrot, the summer squash, broccoli, and the powder melon. And that's one for each season, in that order. Now. It probably wouldn't be a whole video guide coming out on these crops if they were as simple and basic as every other crop in the game. But, you know, Concerned Ape, he didn't want to go into this update just doing more of the same. He wanted to change things up. And because of that, he decided that all four of these crops are not going to be purchasable anywhere in the game. So unlike almost every other crop in the game, you cannot buy any of these four new crops from Pierre's shop, from Joja Mart, or even from the traveling cart, if you were able to luck upon it. Now, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, well, Kilroy, the crops that you can't buy in Stardew Valley are traditionally very impressive things, you know, things like the ancient fruit. That's something that you had to find a harder way to get, and those things are so valuable. They're worth a lot of money. Surely these new crops are like that too, right? Well, you, you know, they they might have a bit of sheen to... Okay, no, they're, they're worthless. I'm very sorry to have to tell you guys. But in the beginning of this guide, I will say from the outset that if you are looking to make a profit from these crops, then you need to look elsewhere. Because sadly, every single one of these new crops is heavily outclassed by even basic crops in Stardew Valley. Now, if they're not worth a lot of money outright, then surely they're good for cooking or quests. No, I'm going to stop you right there. You cannot cook anything with these new crops. There are no quests involving them either. However, this is not a video to be a Debbie Downer. This is a video to tell you what you can do with these new crops. And just because they don't have monetary value doesn't mean they don't have actual value in the game for other things. But before I get into all that and tell you all of the specific benefits of the crops in this update, let me tell you how to get them. Because if you can't get them from the shops, how can you get them? So the best way to get these crops is something I will try to show you by loading up my game here. I am a poor farmer because I'm not making any money off these crops, but at least I got my speed. <laughs> so I wanted to show this off in the actual main village, but I guess my poor farmer is so poor that he is osmosing his negative traits on the entirety of Stardew Valley. So instead, we've escaped to the desert. Now, if you've played Stardew Valley before, you may remember these things called worm spots. And whenever you hoe those worm spots, you are dropped an artifact. But 
if you are a veteran of this game, you'll notice that these are not your traditional worm spots. These are brand new seed spots, and they have about a 17% chance to replace these standard worm spots whenever they spawn. And they are guaranteed to drop two to three of your seasonal seeds. And of course, the seed for spring is the carrot. Now, I say it's seasonal, but you should know outright that the way that these seeds are spawned per season is actually a bit different than just they spawn whatever the seasonal seed is. And I'll show a chart right here that explains that. As you can see, you get the seeds of the season for around the first three weeks of every season. But for the last week, the game will actually shift forward to the seeds for your next season. And that is a pretty nice quality of life decision by Concerned Ape because if you're in like the last five or six days of the month and you were to find one of the seed spots and bring out the like carrot seeds or something, you may not have the time to grow them all, especially for the ones that take longer than three days to grow as these do. So I think it's nice giving the players a chance to stockpile up on next season's seeds before that season arrives. It gives you more planning ability for when the next season starts too. Now, other than these spots, there are other ways to get these seeds in this game, but they're a lot more random. You can find them in crates in the mine or in Skull Cavern here. You can find them in certain fishing chests. In the new mystery boxes that Mr. Key drops, you can find the, these seats in those boxes at some point. But other than these uh, seed spots, the only real consistent way to get these seeds in this game is to trade for them with the raccoon's wife. And the raccoon's wife is part of a new series of quests in this game, but she is also not unlocked until later on in the year. So from day one, if you're just going out there looking to get some of these brand new seeds, your best bet is to go out in the world and look for some seed spots. Now, beyond that, I'll show you a chart right here to show you the trading uh, between your what you can trade with the raccoon's wife to get these seeds. Because fortunately, she is not affected by the same timer as all the other seed spawning events because you can get any seed from her in any season as long as you have the right items to trade with her. So it's the most consistent way to get those seeds for sure. But if you're early in the game or if you just don't have the things to trade with her, go out and hoe up some seed spots. Now, I'm going to go into what, I act what you actually want to grow these seeds for now <laughs> because, hey, you want a guide, you want to know why you should waste your time growing these new seeds if it's not for money and hey i'm here to tell you we will start this exploration with my favorite of the new crops and actually the crop i believe has the most value overall and that is carrots now carrots are extremely quick in their growth cycle it only takes three days for you to plant and then harvest these puppies and the thing is, the most comparable spring crop to the carrots in terms of their speed and sell price is the parsnip. But if you look at the parsnip right here, while it does sell for more than the carrot, it is only worth 25 energy and 11 health when you eat it. And I say only, but that's not a tiny amount. I know a lot of people will grow a lot of parsnips very quickly, so they have energy restoring items when they go into the mines. But while the carrots are a very low sell price at only 35G, they have the benefit of giving a ton of energy. 75 just for a basic quality carrot, and you can grow this in three days. These vegetables are one of the best energy restoring crops in the game. So when you grow carrots, don't grow them expecting to throw them all in the shipping bin here and make bank, no. You grow them because they will provide you with an exceedingly great source of energy, especially for the early game, because they're the spring crop, and spring is when you start out the game with the least amount of energy, and with the energy probably going away the quickest as you try to clear off your farm and go to the mines and such. Now, 
that on its own gives a great reason to grow carrots, but they actually have a little secret benefit as well. You see I have my horse here, and while I don't always build a horse immediately in my own playthrough, I think it is worth it just to get that quick movement around the town when you don't have access to coffee and a lot of the speed boosting items in this game. But something that makes that even better is if you grow carrots, you can feed them to your friend here. This is my horse, his name is Hans, and he's getting a little treat today. And once eating the carrots, they gain a plus 0.4 speed buff for the rest of the day. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to use one of your carrots on that, but, you know, other than just the tangible speed benefits, it's nice being able to interact with your animals more and give them some nice food. Because to be perfectly honest, I don't know how my horse is eating 90% of days in this game, so at least I can finally feed him now. <laughs> but yeah, that's the gist of it with carrots. As I said at the beginning of this video, none of these new crops, you should grow them expecting to use them as very valuable money makers. For those you can always rely on old reliable. Go for potatoes and possibly cauliflower in spring. You go for melons and blueberries in summer. In fall, you can go for pumpkins. And in winter, you go for nothing because you can't grow much. But in terms of the plants, in terms of the vegetables added in this new update, the carrots are incredible for your energy economy early game. And you know, it's fun to just feed your horse and do stuff with them. We are now here in summer, ready to harvest our second new crop of the update, the summer squash. Now, the summer squash is interesting, because as you can see right here, it is one of the crops where after picking them, they continue to grow. And I am on the 7th of summer, and if you plant all of your summer squashes on day one of summer, this is the first day you will be able to get a harvest from them. It takes them six days to mature. But the interesting thing is, after they are matured, it only takes three days for them to regrow. That means that if you plant summer squash on day one of summer, by the end of the season, you will be able to get eight harvests of squash from every individual crop you plant. Now, that's a lot of squash. And if you actually are looking to make money on the summer squash, there are, they're still not the best for money, but they are a lot better than carrots. One summer squash here sells for 45G, which means if you get all eight harvests in a season, you will make 360G just from these squash. And you know, that's a nice little bit of change you can get in your pocket there just from one tiny seed packet. And like the carrots, the summer squash are also worth a lot of energy and health. 63 energy per one squash when you can get eight per season from one crop that's a nice source of energy as well however i'm not just here to repeat myself so there is something i think that summer squashes excel at and that is being a gifting source for most of the town summer squash are liked by almost every single villager in the game the only villagers who don't like summer squash are Haley, abigail Sam, Jazz, and Vincent. So, if you're looking to befriend them, unfortunately you're out of luck. They're not big fans of a nice squash. I couldn't understand that perspective. I do like a good squash in my free time. But yeah, if you're not looking to befriend those, these things are great for every other villager in the game. You can just walk over to town, find almost anyone out there, and you know, getting a love gift isn't always so easy. So having a very consistent source of liked gifts for every villager in the town is pretty valuable. Go over to Pierre right here, say how's it going Pierre? And there you go. And the thing is, I believe they're such a good gifting tool because they grow so frequently. If you plant just one summer squash crop at the beginning of the season by the end you'll have eight free liked items to give to every villager in the game well 
almost every villager. Like I said, the exceptions still apply, but I do think it's also good, like the carrots, for an energy source, just taking a bunch of these to the mine and having plenty of resources to make it down as far as possible. But I also think it's just great for all you guys out there who want to make friends with everyone in the town. And yeah, summer squashes are pretty well-rounded. I don't think they excel at the energy like the carrots do, but they're pretty good at it. They've got a decent enough sell price for these new crops, and they're liked by pretty much everyone. And, you know, I can understand the sentiment. So here we are in fall with our new crop, broccoli. Now, try to ignore whether or not you are a fan of broccoli in real life because, you know, you could be a fan of broccoli in this game. Now broccoli takes eight days to grow and like the summer squash, it continues producing after it is grown once and it will produce every four days after the initial eight day growth cycle. Now, unlike Summer Squash, unfortunately, the days don't really line up perfectly for that. If you, if you plant broccoli on day one of fall, then you will only manage to get five harvests because the sixth harvest will occur one day after the 28th, which will be winter, and at that point, all the broccoli dies. However, the way to solve that problem is to use Speed Grow, if you plant a broccoli on day one of fall and you apply speed grow to it, then instead of growing in the initial eight days, it'll only take seven. That's why it is done on Monday the 8th for me, when normally it's done on Tuesday the 9th. And if you have it done on Monday the 8th, you will be able to get six harvests per season. Now, as I said at the beginning, all of these crops in this game aren't exactly the biggest money maker. None of these 1.6 crops are. But if you are looking to make money from these new crops, the broccoli is the standout. It is worth the most of all these crops at 70G. And with six harvests per individual crop per season, if you apply the speed grow, then that means you will be getting 420G from one broccoli plant per season. And you know... That's not, that's a respectable amount of money there. So, if you're looking for my best recommendation on what to do with the broccoli plant, it is actually the selling. Now, broccoli is much like the carrots and the summer squash. It's worth a lot of energy. However, summer squash are more plentiful and carrots take much less time to grow. So, I don't think these are as good sources of energies as the other two. And something I didn't mention in the previous section is that the love, the liked and disliked reactions to the summer squash are actually shared by the carrot and the broccoli as well. The exact same villagers like the carrot and the execs and the broccoli and the exact same villagers dislike the carrot and the broccoli as they do with the summer squash. I still think the summer squash is the best for gifting because you can get the most of it per season and you can kind of just sit on that stockpile for a while. But hey, if you got some extra broccoli that you don't want to sell or use for energy, then you can just go out into town and gift these to the same people as well and they will get a pretty happy response to it. Other than that, broccoli isn't all too exceptional. There's no secret mechanics like feeding it to your horse to make them go faster. I think if I fed this broccoli to Hans, he might go slower, if anything. <laughs> Sorry, that's just my bias taking over. I'm not a huge broccoli fan in real life. But yeah, if you are looking for my opinion on the best thing to use broccoli for, it's to cash in on that 420 gold per season. And hey, that's only if you get nothing but base quality crops, you know. If you get silver or gold like I have here, those are worth more than 70 each. So hey... Out of all the not great money makers, this one is the best. And finally, we come across the final season of Stardew, winter, with the final crop, the powder melon. Now, before I walk outside, let me say that one of the coolest things about this new crop is that 
it can be a giant crop. And in case you didn't know, in Stardew, there are certain crops like melons and powder melons that if you grow them in this 3x3 three three radius, they have a chance to grow into a giant crop instead of just nine individual crops. Now, these giant crops are cool because you can break them open with your X, and when you do so, they will give you more than nine of the crops. I just got 20 powder melons from only nine crops being planted. But to be honest, if you're someone like me, I don't want to break these crops open when I see them. I want this to be preserved for the whole season. Because this is one of the coolest decorations you can find in this game, is a giant crop. Now, now that I've got my positive things to say out of the way, let's go into the negatives. Because unfortunately, I think the powder melons have a lot of negatives. So, they have a 7 day growth cycle. Which means that planting them on day 1, you will get your first harvest on day 8. Monday the 8th of winter. And... They are only worth 60G, so they're worth less than the broccoli. And the thing that makes me upset about that is, let's just give you a comparison right here. The Amaranth, that is another seven day growth crop. It's in the fall. And when you harvest and sell the Amaranth, you can sell it for 150G. So these powder melons are worth next to nothing. They're worth 40% of an amaranth. They are just not great investments in terms of crops in any other season. However, and this is a big however, the powder melon are the only seed that you can plant and grow in the winter. For every other patch in this game, winter was meant to be a barren season. You're not really able to grow any crops at all in winter. Other than I believed the mix, not mix seeds, the winter forage seeds, but those aren't really crops. They're kind of just for foraging purposes. And obviously this is excluding stuff like the greenhouse in which you can grow in every season. But if you wanted to make use of all of the land that you had on your farm in winter, for every other patch, you were kind of just out of luck. So even though the powder melons aren't exactly a great moneymaker and I don't have a lot of like extraneous sources for them either. They're worth the same energy 63, you know, that's pretty good. They're not as good for gifting as every other 1.6 crop because a lot of people are kind of just neutral on them as gifts. However, the, the powder melon give you the benefit of being able to actually plant and harvest crops on your field in the winter. And if you're normally planting nothing, then even 60 gold per melon is a substantial upgrade, you know? And of course, nothing can be said negative about the giant crop possibility. Because even if you don't want to just keep it around for aesthetic, aesthetic purposes, you will still get a whole bunch of melons just from spawning that giant crop to begin with. And hey, that's worth more money or more energy, depending on what you want to do with it. So, yeah. That is my full guide on every single new crop added in the 1.6 update. And as I said at the beginning, you can compare these things in terms of price to price or how much you're making per day and those kind of values as always. And most of these crops will lose out to the standard crops you can get in Stardew Valley just from buying them from Pierre or going to the desert and buying star fruit from sandy you know they will be outclassed but stardew is a game made for variety you know it's the spice of life you can you can always just set up a farm with a bunch of ancient fruit and star fruit and probably make the most money off of that but not everything in this game is about money you know You've got friendship, you've got the mines, you've got finding energy to make it through the day to do whatever you want to do. And really, these new plants give you a great way to fill a lot of those purposes. Whether it's just making your horse happier for a day, making all the people in the, in the valley happier for a day by giving them some of the plants they like, or, you know, finding a good source of energy. Or for the powder melon, 
finding a way to use all of this land that normally would just be taking up space during the winter. So I still really appreciate all these crops added in this update by Concerned Ape. And I don't know if he's going to continue working on this game forever, but I'd love to see more of his experimental ideas for crops, you know? Stuff like all these crops that you can't buy at shops at all and you just have to find in the wild or you have to find by trading to a bunch of raccoons. <laughs> He's got a very creative mind, that concerned Dave. But that's all for my video today. Thank you all for watching and hey, please return for future Stardew Valley videos. I've been loving making these and I'd love to continue making them for all of you to watch on YouTube. Have a good day, guys.